Let's roll it. Black Friday 2030. Black Friday 2030 will not exist. It will not exist. No. One late night we couldn't sleep, so we went on a shopping spree. We asked our partners and our peers about the future of retail and what it could be. Welcome to the Future of Retail podcast. I'm your intrigue host, Arif Yahya, and with me today is Darmin Ved, the Chief Executive Officer of SixStreet.com. Hey, Arif. How are you doing? Hi, Darmin. Where are we? Uh, we are in the GCC's first digital store, and uh, this is in Dubai, in Dubai Hills Mall. Thank you for having us here. Like we're very excited to be here. I think it's not a secret because there aren't shoppers around us, and I know that this is uh, you know one of the busiest stores uh, right now in town. Um, we've been here since what time today? We have been here since 6 a.m. You, you've been here since 6 a.m. 5 a.m. Yeah, the the crew was here since 5 a.m. <laughs> I had to be at 6, right? You know, it's 6, 6 Street. Yes, so yes, I had yes, to come in at 6. Absolutely. Actually, like many of us are dog owners. My dog was very confused this morning. I woke up at 4. He's like, is it, is it time? What's going on? Is it time to get up? And he got up with me. I'm like, no, you're, you're not coming with us. But, uh, but yeah, we had to start early because like uh, this gets really busy in a couple of hours. Yeah. Uh, so we're grateful that you were able to host us uh, here. It's, uh, it's a very special place and we're going to spend a lot of time this episode talking about it. Uh, we're super intrigued, all of us, about Thank this you. first digital store. Uh, but before we do, we want to get to know Darmin as a person uh, first. And sure. we're going to ask you to introduce yourself, but not as the chief executive officer of SixStreet.com, not just as the business leader that most people know in the retail industry in the region, but the way you would introduce yourself on our platform. So when you sign into TikTok, you're usually asked to write a bio, but you're limited to 80 characters. Because when you are limited, yeah. your creativity is supposed to spark. So how would you, Darmin Ved, introduce yourself in 80 characters? Sure. Actually, the best way to do it is actually I'm going to open my TikTok profile. Okay. Right? And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. So, uh, dad at home, child at heart, challenging the present, here for a better tomorrow. Nice. Nice. And all within 80 characters. Was that really your TikTok profile? Yep. Okay. You want me to I'm show going to choose to believe that. <laughs> uh, but thank, thank, you for, thank you for doing that. So, Darmin, we still want to get to know you as, as a person before we get into the details uh, of the store. Uh, and we're going to do a TikTok challenge together. Let's do it. Have you been a, a part of a TikTok challenge in the past? Uh, no. So, so, this would be your first. We are doing a lot of first. Okay, great. So this challenge is called 10 questions, one minute, duet me. Uh, the screen is going to split. I'm going to ask you 10 questions, but okay. you won't have a lot of time to think about them. Okay. So on the clock, let me know when you're ready. Try not to blink and we can start. Ready when you are. Okay, one minute. How do people mispronounce your name? Oh, 101 ways. I've heard so many things, but the worst is Darwin. Which clothing item do you hate shopping for the most? The most? Ooh, I would say jeans. What do you like about corn? Ooh, I like this one. Uh, I can't believe it's real. Finish the sentence. Sa, sa, sa. Sa, 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 super six. What's your favorite brand within apparel group that is not Sixth Street? You know, I absolutely love my Birkenstocks. What's your best record running a marathon? Best record running a marathon? Ooh, I was at almost, I almost beat my own record, which was 2.10, 2 minutes and 10, uh, 2 hours and 10 minutes. Early bird? Half marathon, by the way, not a full. Early bird or night owl? 100% early bird. What's your pet peeve at home? At home, I hate it. I absolutely hate it when uh, AC is left on when the room is uh, empty. What's your pet peeve at work? People living in comfort zone. What's your favorite digital platform? Uh, let me think about it. That's it's a not that hard, hard one. Of course, it's got to be TikTok. How, how did we do? We good? Okay, we're good. We made it. Your first TikTok <laughs> challenge. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Darmin. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, we know we, you're very well known about the, both efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, and moving on, uh, we're going to talk about the store, obviously. So this section of the podcast is called POV, uh, POV on, and it's going to be POV on the future is digital. So, Darmin, the first time we met in the store when you were giving us a sneak peek about how this all started, you told me the story about the bulletin board, the whiteboard. Yeah. So, can you tell the viewers and the listeners the story, how, how this exercise started? 
Sure. So, you know, while, while uh, we, for us, the number one aim is always just to improve a customer's experience. That's it. By far, that's the number one thing we start with, right? So we literally went onto a whiteboard and says, how do we improve a customer's experience? What are the uh, amazing things about online? And we wrote those, uh, wrote those uh, things on the whiteboard. And then what is awesome about offline, right? And we literally picked the best of both of them then to create a new kind of a store that will improve the customer's experience, right? So we take a physical space and add digital thought process to the whole thing. Uh, we know that the customers love about online is the browse, browsing in their own convenience time and understanding what is actually available. And about offline, they really love the fact that they can touch, feel and try products. And they're also able to get instant gratification as well. So we combine everything to create this digital concept. So tell us, tell us more, like when you were doing this exercise, like how did you get the insights? Was it talking to shoppers, to customers? Was it based on your industry experience? Like what, what was the input going into this exercise? It's actually, you know, multifaceted uh, data points that you can think about, right? So one is we are, we are online ourselves. So we definitely did a lot of customer surveys. I right? literally spoke to the customers on understanding what they love. And we, we have over time, our data has clearly shown that, you know, uh, things like browsing is a huge deal for our customers, right? And in the offline world, we, I actually, I have an offline background. So I've opened many, many stores in the past. And so, you know, I, we already knew what the customer was uh, looking for and what they lo loved about offline. And you tapped into the experience with uh, with Apparel Group. Obviously, Sixth Street of course. is part of Apparel Group. Yes, of, of course, right? And, and as a group, we have over 2,000 stores. So we really know what that uh, sweet spot for a customer is. And, and one of the things I've, I've heard you say in the past, even before the digital store, was when you started SixthStreet.com, it was always meant to be omnichannel, correct? Absolutely. And like, how are you operating with an omnichannel mindset before the store itself? So even before the store opened, I forget the store, even before we as Six Street started, we always started with an omnichannel mindset, right? Okay. That means we wanted to make sure we connect into the stores where the, all the usual suspects, right? Uh, uh, click and collect, ship from stores, pick it from stores, do an exchange, do a refund, any of those things, any interaction that is possible, we wanted to build into our, our world as well, right? So we always started with that as a mindset. Okay. And when it comes to like starting the store, like when when it comes to your objectives, like how do you go about it? Is it uh, driving incrementality of sales? Uh, do you look at the store to sweeten your, your margins in a way? Or is it, is it purely experimental and uh, you, it's just a learning experience for the time being? So for us, the number one, as uh, I was mentioning earlier, the number one objective is improve customer's experience, okay. right? And uh, with the physical, digital store, if you're able to do that, then we have already succeeded, right? There's a ton more stuff that we can do to further enhance experience uh, from here onwards. But, you know, when we started off, when we kicked it off the project, we had already a set of objectives. We went ahead and we created those. And now we have another 100 different things that we want to, you know, implement so that we are able to further improve the customer's experience. Of course, sales is important. And of course, uh, making sure that you have the right inventory and so on and so forth is important. But it's the customer's experience that we begin with and we end with as well. And, and this is really what differentiates this proposition and we were super excited to, to be here with you today uh, because when you first gave us a sneak peek about the store, like we were expecting something different maybe as in we thought, okay, it's going to be just very high tech, uh, smart mirrors, things that we're, we've seen in the past when it comes to uh, terms used like digital and uh, the merge of online and offline. But what we were surprised about is it wasn't about the gimmicks at all. It was more about what are you solving for? So yeah. if you can walk us through the experience, like let's say I'm a, I'm a shopper. Yeah. I just walked into the store. Sure. How does the experience exactly work out? Absolutely right. So, you know, we, like I was uh, saying earlier, which is that the experience was created with the thought process of saying we as consumers today love to browse through our phones, you know, to get uh, to the type of products that we want to buy. And so that experience continues in the store. You can sit on a tablet, browse through it and find the right, right these product. Tablets, yeah. These yeah, absolutely. These tablets here. And you can actually find the right uh, product that you want for yourself, right? Now, as soon as you say, hey, listen, I want to try a jacket, a shirt, a dress, a top, then, you know, it gives you the option of getting into the fitting room. And that's where all the excitement is because you have now gone from the tablet which is your whole online experience to a physical experience of a fitting room and trying and touching the product. Sorry to interrupt you. What if I order a shoe? 
So if it is a shoe, the experience is that you know the shoe comes to you right here uh, on the so floor. So I stay seated. You stay seated at the tablet. The shoe will come to you. You try the shoe, the product, you know, and you find out whether it's the right shoe for you. Once you're done with understanding that this is the one you want to buy, there is no post machine in the store, so you don't need to go to any cash counter or anywhere else. Just speak to one of our fashion stylists, and they will help you check it out. Check out, and you can uh, head home from That's there. That's super cool. Yeah, That's super cool. Okay, let's say now I order a jacket. Yeah. So where does this take me next? So as soon as you order a jacket, you will get a message saying your order is received. A couple of minutes later, you're going to get another message saying, "Hey, listen, your items are now ready in fitting room number three." Okay. Right. So as soon as you head to the fitting room number three, by the way, till you have headed there, you have not seen the product at all. Okay. Right. So the jacket is nowhere in in sight. But as soon as you head into uh, the store, uh, the fitting room number three, the closet opens up, and now your jacket is sitting there already. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's a closet and not just a fitting room. That means you will not see packaging materials, well, well ironed uh, jacket on a hanger, exactly like how do you how you would have it in your own home. And there are I mean, like so many times we're in a fitting room and uh, I try on like a shirt or a jacket and it's it's a bit tight. Yeah. Um, and the the worst part is when I try on a pants and like it's too small and I want to change it. So then I have to change yeah. back. And like open the curtain and tell someone, excuse me, like uh, can you help me change the size? Yeah. Will this be experienced here? And, and or store? or worse, right? You know, it's a, it's a tight jeans, and now you have half open jeans trying to run around the store, exactly, yeah. right? Where your where your rest of your wallet, your phone, everything sits in the fitting room. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's right? super annoying thing, and this is exactly why you know we took that customer experience thought process and says, how do we improve that? What we did is in the store, in the fitting room today, what we have is a tablet as well. So all the items you ordered, you can actually see it on that tablet and ch choose a different size if you wanted to. So all the items that are there, the jacket is there, you wanted to choose a different size, you go ahead and do that one. Automatically, the product, the jacket will come back into the fitting room without you ever leaving the fitting room, talking to anybody or seeing the product by itself, right? So it automatically comes back into the fitting room, wow. into your closet. As soon as the door opens again, your item is sitting there and you're able to try. You never left a fitting room to begin with. So to help our listeners visualize it, because the podcast is on both video and audio, right. I'm inside a fitting room and I'm trying on a jacket and it's a bit uh, small. I want a large size. I click on an iPad inside the fitting room. Yes. And then I put back the jacket in the closet, which is still inside the fitting room. I Absolutely. haven't left it. Absolutely. I close the door. Yeah. On the back end, there's an exchange of the item. Correct. And then the door reopens. Absolutely. While I maintain my privacy. Oh, hundred percent of okay. that one. Yeah, and you know what the what the best part is? We actually leave both the items in the in the fit in the closet. Okay. Because you know, so many times it happens. We try one size, we think, hey, it's not the right one. Yeah. We try another one, and you're like, no, actually, you know what? The previous one was better. So we leave both of them in there just to make sure that you know you have the right size that you actually yeah. wanted, yeah. and you don't have to keep doing the back and forth uh, the whole time. You don't have to tell me about this because, like, I obviously I used to be a medium, became a large, and recently became an XL, <laughs> and like I go in the fitting room hoping that uh, you know this time I'm gonna be a large and I try it on and it's a bit tight and then I try on the XL and it's good but I try back so exactly. the switching always happens inside exactly, the fitting right? room. Exactly right. So, so these but are the at least it's within a private experience. Oh, that's the know, thing, so. right? And you don't have to be running around the store yeah. or trying to find the size or finding somebody who can then help you find a size, right? None of those things are needed, right? And this is what we, our, our whole motto was, right? Yeah. Which is improve the customer's experience. So see all these pain points that we face in the retail experience, retail yeah. environment today and improve those ones through digital mindset. I love yeah. it. I love it. And okay, let's say I like the jacket. I leave the fitting room. What do I do next? That's it. You take the jacket, you come out uh, back into the store, uh, find any one of our fashion stylists. They scan your product in, Apple Pay, off you go. Nice. And I just walk out. That's it. And that's it. That's it. Seamless experience. And how are you leveraging uh, SixStreet.com, the application, the app, in connection with the store? Or are they completely uh, siloed from one another? No, no, they are very much connected with each other, but there is a long journey of doing a ton more interactions and integrations together as well. So as an example, today, the products which are available in the store are also available online with us. Okay. Right? Uh, today, we haven't uh, yet enabled it, which you know, it's just a matter of a week where you can also see products which are on 60.com 
on our tablets as well. Nice. But because we wanted to not over uh, complicate the journeys, right? So we we taking it step by step and making sure slowly and steadily we keep bringing in new features and new enhancements into the store as well. So Darman, other than the tablets and the beautiful experience you just explained that solves a lot of my personal pain points as a shopper, one of the key features that we don't happen to see right now because we're here since 5 a.m. Uh, are your style advisors. And your style advisors is the name that you chose to go with for your uh, staff inside the store. So they're not called salespeople or associates, no. they're called no. style advisors. What's the thought process behind that? So, you know, when we were, when we were looking to, to build our team for the store, we did not want a, somebody who's just a salesperson or somebody who's just a runner who just gets the right size for you, right? We were looking at it from a perspective of saying, you know, that they are a style advisor and how do we connect with our customers and saying what is the right items to wear for a specific occasion, mm -hmm. right? And also when we were speaking to them, you know, we started with a conversation saying, hey, listen, talk to us about your social accounts, right? And just have a chat with us in regards to your extrovert nature because what we wanted to be able to do... Show us your TikToks. Show your TikToks, absolutely, right? You know, because that's the only way then we know, you know, how how they are, you know, in the because, you know, this personality is very big deal, right? You know, when you're out there, when you're doing the dance on TikTok and showing yeah. the videos and doing this one, it really shows your outward personality and that's exactly the type of people that we were looking for and that was really important for us. So it was not about where did you study or, you know, nice. what is your previous experience or none of those things, right? So that was it's not, not the a regular interview and it's not a regular expectation you have of them absolutely not store. completely different right i think most of them were pretty surprised like what are you talking about like you know <laughs> this is like that's it you don't need to you don't want to know where i studied or yeah. you know what is my previous work work experience or any of those things is that's irrelevant to me because you know if you're creating a complete different you know stream here it's a it's a new way of thinking and so this is how we want to do it okay i have a question on this and i hope it it's not taken the wrong way uh, because you mentioned they're extroverted and uh, uh, to be honest like some of us like myself included sometimes I do feel extroverted but a lot of times I feel like an introvert uh, especially when I'm shopping and uh, I will confess to you that sometimes I go to stores and I get interrupted so often about uh, hi yeah. how can I help you how can I help you excuse me how can I help you and like I stop wanting to shop and I just leave usually the store. Uh, and I, I know it might not be representative, but I have heard a lot of shoppers say the same. So yeah, how same. will this work out here in this digital store? You're 100% right. I'm the same as you, right? As okay. soon as like somebody starts to follow me, I'm saying, you know what, I'm out of here. This <laughs> is not fun for me anymore. So, so, you know, we do not have the thought process of saying, we first interact with you, right? Okay. We want you to interact with us. We want you to be comfortable in the zone. Right, because the the experience on our tablets is pretty native, right? So it's not actually a new thing that you're trying to learn. The new thing that you're trying to really learn is how does this physical and digital environment merge together, right? Yeah. So that's when, you know, we, we jump into the picture, which is, you know, most of the time the customer is first coming to us and saying, hey, where are your fairy rooms? Can I try the product, right? You know, how do I get the shoe, right? How do I buy this one? So if those are the questions that are, we are asked, yes, we are here to uh, help the customers, but we are not the first ones to go out there and just follow the customer. By the way, you know, previously we were talking about the shoe, right? Even the shoe, when we bring the shoe to you, we're just bringing it to you and leaving it with you. We're not here to constantly bombard you with more and more interaction yeah. about the shoe. We're just here to say, hey, whatever you're comfortable with, if this makes you, know, you comfortable and in your zone, we leave you alone to uh, do that. This is so insightful. Honestly, like this is part of why I, I, I love this industry because it's it's less about product and more about customers and customer insights and uh, c c the customer being the boss or, or the king uh, that Absolutely. basically dictates everything else that follows. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and shopping as an experience is a very nuanced experience. So it's not uh, black or white. It's not like uh, I'm either introverted or extroverted. Uh, we mentioned one example. The other example is sometimes you actually want advice. So like if, if, if I've found myself so many times uh, in other stores uh, where I want someone experienced to give me advice about something, I don't know how to shop, like uh, a wedding suit, for example. Yeah. But you find uh, maybe that the experience isn't necessarily there. So the fact that you have fashion advisors and they're meant to advise on the style yeah. makes up for that when, when needed. I Absolutely guess. right. J just to just to throw in an example. So when um, I'm a runner and you know I be, I went to a a store and I asked them, hey, listen, you know I'm doing a long distance one, but I don't need you know so and so shoe. So they said, uh, you know what, uh, we have this product on sale. Do yeah. you want it? 
right? Like, wait, that's not my objective. It's yeah. not, I'm not here because it's. What on, are you solving for? So, yeah. Exactly, right? You know, that's not the question I ask. I'm asking, how, what is the best shoe to run a specific distance, right? And that's the conversation that we want to have with our customers, right? When the customers comes in and says, "Listen, I want a new shoe," it's not about, "Hey, listen, what is the shoe do you want?" It's like, "What is the occasion you're going to wear it for?" Oh, I'm going for dinner tonight. Sure. What is the dress that you're actually wearing along with it? That's when you now start to have the real conversation of saying, "What product or what shoe or what handbag or what dress to wear?" Is starts when you understand occasion. When you understand the peripheral around it, right? You already have a dress. Now we're looking for a shoe. It's easier now for us to help you, saying this is the right type of product for so you. So showing genuine interest and authenticity versus uh, going through a sales pitch that is rehearsed across all customers. Absolutely right, because there is no sales conversation there, and there is no size conversation there. All of that is taken care digitally by technology. Okay. Okay, so the word digital, which uh, which you've obviously used uh, for for the store, uh, there's quite a few definitions about it. Uh, obviously, the merge of physical and digital. One of the articles that I found interesting recently on Forbes uh, tried to quantify like five rules for digital in general. I'm not going to take you through all of them, but there's there's a couple that I thought are interesting. I'd like love to get your thoughts sure. on them. So one of the rules about digital is digital is all about psychology. Train your staff to be symbiotic with technology. So how, how does this apply to SixStreet.com? So, you know, I, I think uh, it's not about training for technology. I think it's, again, about training for experience. Yeah. Right, you know, if because we believe the way we have created the store, it's native for everybody. What I mean by that is the tablet actually is a native experience of any e-commerce site. Right. The trial room, fitting rooms are native experience of a fitting room, right? You know, you trying your shoes a native experience. So we're trying to actually bring all native experiences together. So it's more about saying, hey, how do we actually enhance the customer's experience through bringing all these things together? Um, that is what I believe in. Makes sense. Uh, the other one was about digital not being uh, a destination, but being more of a journey. Uh, and talking about how organizations in general don't wake up one day and become digital, so that it's a, it's a strategy that requires like constant evaluation, being okay that you're going to look at your PNL as one PNL and treating the brand as one organism yeah. basically yeah. versus I'm looking at the digital store yeah. PNL versus the online PNL. Does this relate to to you or do you see it differently? One hundred percent, right? So you know we don't look at it separately for sure. It is all together because we we see already in the short time that we've been open that the experience in the store versus online is actually merged. That means we can see customers who are who have already shopped with us online coming to our store and the ones who have come to our store now coming online and shopping with us as well, right? So it has to be a merged conversation. It can never be in its individuality. And answering the first part of the question which you asked, which was, you know, what is the path of digital, if you like, right? Yeah. We believe that actually everybody is trying and figuring this thing out. Actually, there is no path. We, are, we really believe that we are we are also one of those who are paving the path right now. There is no perfect experience already out there. We are all trying to make this a better experience for our customers, right? The way we created the store, we our belief is that this is a better way to do it, right? You know, and so as we learn and iterate, we will keep improving it through our stores as well. Do I mean, tell me honestly, like if tomorrow or in a couple of months, we walk around Dubai Hills and there's more and more digital stores opening up, how would that make you feel? Proud. Proud? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I'm not worried about uh, somebody else doing it. Honestly, think about it, right? It's not about the tablets. Anybody can buy a tablet. It's not about uh, just the higher level thought process of what the software is to you know connect all those pieces. Uh, again, something that can be done. It's when you are able to really think about a unified experience for the customer. That's where the change in the conversation comes in, right? And I, honestly, I'm just as happy to learn, you know, from everybody else, you know, about how to improve the experience, you know, as, a, as somebody else would be from our stores as well. So you're you welcome competition. 100%, right? You know, for us, this is, uh, it, it pushes us, yeah. right? It pushes us to do better and to further improve, you know, the customer's experience. So we've said something similar in the past as, as a platform that it's easy to copy a feature. It's much harder to copy a community. Uh, when we get True. questions uh, asked on, on TikTok uh, yeah. in general. Exactly. So, so you know this exactly. So we, right? we relate. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much, Darmin. This was POV on the future is digital. Thank We're going to move ahead now to the next section, which is sure. share comment. So basically, when you log into TikTok and you see a video that you like, you can either heart it yeah. 
or you can share it with mm -hmm. someone or you can comment on it. Sure. Uh, so to make this a bit more gamified, I'm going to read out to you some statistics. Some are about sixthstreet.com, some are about Black Friday, the industry, TikTok, Omnichannel. And all you have to do is either say heart, if you heart the comment, or if you say share, tell me who you'd, you would like to share it with. Okay. Or you can stop me and say, I'd like to comment and, and give a comment about the stuff. Sure. There are 50,000 plus units physically stocked in this digital store today. So I'm going to comment on that one. We actually have 2.4x more inventory in the same space as any other physical location. Wow. 47% of consumers expect touch-free technologies to be made available across retail outlets in the UAE. Share it with the non-believers. <laughs> According to Red Sears Leadership Index, Omnichannels have a 15% higher brand trust score than other retailers. I'm going to comment on that, actually. Sandeep needs to check it because I think the percentage should be way higher than that. <laughs> Omnichannel customers, by the way, are the most, uh, most loyal and the most... Uh, uh, sought after customers. More than 20% of consumers prefer to search for fashion products online before trying them out and purchasing in store. A digital experience will enhance their in store experience greatly. Heart, heart, heart. Heart. One out of three shoppers say that they are more loyal to brands who remember their preferences. I'm going to share it with my product team. Three out of four TikTok users say that a creator's relatability and authenticity motivates them to buy from a brand. Share it with the marketing, share it with uh, everyone saying, go uh, get uh, top, top views for uh, TikTok, TikTok. Uh, uh, for, the, for the upcoming months. Uh, TikTok generates twice as much post-purchase content creation. So TikTok users are two times more likely to create a post about a product or brand that they have purchased from. I'm going to comment. Absolutely true. Nearly 50% of Black Friday journeys happen on digital platforms, followed by e-commerce. Hearted. There's a 60% year-on-year increase in excitement for Black Friday. Hearted as well. Okay, the last one. Spontaneous discovery leads to spontaneous purchases. 71% of TikTok users' purchases during Black Friday were unplanned. Uh, comment on it, uh, true, uh, customers are always looking for new things and so uh, very much it becomes an unplanned journey as soon as they see some awesome products at an awesome price, they want to buy it. Okay, thank you, Darmin. Thank you. Uh, now we're going to move to a section called Sound On. TikTok is a very much a sound on platform. So we're not going to do a TikTok podcast without having some sound bites from you. Okay. I'm not going to ask you to read them out loud. Are you familiar with text to speech? Uh, sure. So it's the functionality. I'm a TikTok user, so... Perfect. So um, text-to-speech uh, audio is going to read out the three sound bites that you have said in the past. Me? Uh, yourself. Okay. I'm not going to remind you where you said them, but you can give us a little bit of context on each one. Sure. If that sounds good. Sure. Sounds good. All right. This is not the future. This is the present. Yeah, I must have said this multiple times over, right? You know, I, I, I just feel that, you know, we still keep talking in future tense for so many things like a digital store or, you know, pers hyper-personalization of customers or any of those aspects. It's not the future, it's the present. You know, we are in it today, right? Yeah. So let's not talk about it in future tense because then we action it in future tense as well. So this right? is not a store of the future. You know, this is the thing, right? You know, it's the store, it's present today. We're sitting, We're right, sitting right here, here yeah. in the store, right? This is not the future anymore. This is the present. We are right here already. <laughs> it gives us food for thought. Maybe we should change the name of our podcast to the present of uh, retail. Uh, <laughs> so the second sound bite. By owning the last mile, we control the experience. That's true. I, I, I remember um, this uh, conversation because um, uh, we were asked like, you know, why, why is it that you are doing your own last mile, last mile deliveries as well? And we said, there's only one re the reason we do anything, which is for a better customer experience. And we saw that our partners were not able to help us with so many things uh, that we wanted to implement and help improve that experience. And so we had to go ahead and uh, develop our own last mile fleets, which we operate, by the way, across the whole region now. So you own like 75% of deliveries. So all 75% of all the deliveries are actually done by ourselves now, right? And across the whole region, in all the six countries, right? But just to give you an example of a feature that we are able to do that others are not, uh, not because they don't want to, but because a lot 
lot of times the query patterns are not supporting are things like exchange, right? So when you buy a shoe and you say, hey, oh, it's not the right size or a t-shirt yeah. or a jacket, whatever at home. And you wanted to now, you know, get a different size for it. Yeah. Currently, the experience is broken. And because we have our own last mile, we are able to actually introduce a feature called exchange. That means, you know, we'll get you the right size and just take the older size away, uh, take back uh, the older size from you rather than you having to do two different orders, trying to deal with two different couriers at different, different times and have a very broken experience. I mean, honestly, like sitting with you is a crash course in retail. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy we're doing this. Uh, not just for the sake of the digital store, but like overall, like when you speak about last mile, overall profitability, business, omni-channel. Uh, so yeah. It's actually very, very, very simple, right? Take care of your customers and they'll take care of you. I love that. It's uh, it's uh, good business sense in general, whether you apply it to retail or any other industry. Absolutely. Okay, but I'm going to stop giving you compliments now and move to the last <laughs> sound bite. It's a patience game. It's a trial game. It's a lot of testing game. That's what true. was that about? That's true. So, you know, uh, it, it actually applies to everything we do, right? You know, nothing happens overnight. So anybody who says this is an overnight success, it, that doesn't exist. You know, there's a years of hard work behind it. Um, and it is also a lot of trial tests, learn and then uh, uh, improve, right? So this store is exactly an example of something like this. You know, we started over a year ago. Uh, today we are sitting here, you know, with a thought process, a trial in mind. Uh, we are learning from this one ourselves. We constantly speak to our customers and say, you know, everybody coming into the source, hey, help us improve the experience. What would you like to see more? How can we help it uh, be, make it even better for you? And we are going to take all those thought processes for the second store that we will open soon as well. But any advice on how uh, other leaders can buy patients? Because patience is not always easy to buy when you have investors yeah. on your neck. So any advice on how, how you can earn that right to, to buy patience? So patience is not um, as easy, right? You know, I'm not that patient either, right? You know, I'm always trying to push the boundaries and say, no, guys, you know, we can do it faster. We can do it better. We can do this. We can do that. But, you know, at one stage, we do need to realize that uh, it takes time to get it rolling, right? Yeah. And it's better to take that extra time and, you know, bring a better product out there rather than, you know, do a super shortcut and completely ruin a customer's experience by bringing a poor product into the market, right? So there is, it's a very fine balance because you always want to bring out as fast so you can actually get feedback from customer, but at the same time, it cannot be so bad that it you know, completely ruined uh, the experience either. It's a very fine balance uh, Makes to sense. manage. Makes sense. It's all in the balance. So, Darmin, we're going to move to my favorite section. I always say that it's my favorite section because oh, yeah. it really is. Uh, I have to give you a quick context. So, this section is called Roulette of the Future. Okay. And the reason we started this section is because we feel that when we say future or future of retail, similarly to what you were saying before, everybody imagines like 10 or 20 years down the line. So, the entire conversation becomes hijacked by you know, science fiction-like uh, scenarios. Yeah. But the future is happening today. The future is tomorrow. There are so many horizons to the future. So we're going to roll a roulette with you. Okay. And depending on where the roulette lands, we're going to have a certain version of this future. Sure. It could be in a month, it could be in a year, or it could be further down the line, like 2030 or, or beyond that. Sure. Sounds good? Yeah. So this is the third uh, episode and I still mess up uh, using uh, the iPad, but... Uh, That's fine, you'll get used to it. <laughs> but, here, but here we go. Uh, so let's roll the roulette on our first topic. And our first topic is going to be the retail industry in the MENA region. Retail in MENA? Yep. Sure. So I just press that. Yeah. Okay. Next month. Next month. So uh, retail in MENA in the next month. I believe uh, next month, all the uh, retail industry heads are going to be sitting with their teams and figuring it out how to create more digital environment for their customers and how they want to bring these experiences together as well. After the success of the store. Absolutely. Okay. So the second topic, Darmin, is going to be Black Friday. Sure. Let's roll the roulette. Let's roll it. Black Friday 2030. Black Friday 2030 will not exist. It will not exist? No. I, I think um, what I feel that uh, what's happening is there is too much burden and pressure on a system on too few days and it is breaking the systems completely, right? And as these days are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it's becoming harder and harder and harder to actually provide a smooth journey for our customers, right? So I think it's going to get 
distribute it. We can already see many brands moving away from the whole concept, saying we're not even going to bother participating anymore we, because our customers love our product and they will buy throughout the year and not wait just for a discount on a specific day uh, to buy the product, right? So, but this year. Is it still a priority? For sure. It's still a huge deal this year. And I think that um, this is a, over the next, by the way, I feel that, you know, we are still at the beginning of the journey. So I'm not saying it's at the peak even till now. Yeah. But I feel that, you know, 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, you know, 2030, 2030, 35, you know, that peak would have gone and we would have been on the downward side by that time. And, and you've Today, we are still, by the way, still climbing the mountain. It's not, we are not at the peak till now. Okay. And, and I feel you've created your own version of Black Friday, which is Super 6, right? Every sixth of the month. Right. So what we have is uh, something called Super 6, which is on the 6th of every month on 6th Street, you get a special offer for, for the customers. The rest of the month, we are just like a normal full price website so that, you know, we, we are able to cater to the new products and everything else that we launch every time. But once a month, uh, we do this special event. Okay. And on that note, I have to clarify something we did earlier in the episode. Um, we were playing the game of the Duet Me. Um, yeah. and we did 10 question, 10 questions in one minute. Yeah. Um, and one of it was uh, sa sa sa, and you said super six. Yes, absolutely. So I want to give credit that this was the first hashtag challenge to run in the Mina region on TikTok from a retail uh, brand. Um, and this was the super six challenge we did together around yes. two years ago. So that absolutely, was the context. Right. It was it was the first time we and you know it was a great learning for both of us, right? Yeah. On what was happening, and we saw unbelievable results, right? Uh, for that uh, challenge that we did. Completely local, the artist is local, the conversations are local, both of us. Exactly, it was local, like leveraging it full funnel marketing, upper yeah. funnel, driving sales, the power of creators, music on TikTok, and uh, you were one of the first brands to do it in the region, so thank you for that. No, thank you for uh, collaborating with us to do that, you know, uh, as a first as well. Okay, Darmin, we are nearing the end of our podcast and this section is reply to comment. We've chosen for you one comment from the community and we're going to end by asking you this one question. And our question to you today is, what is the best advice you've gotten in your career? Best advice? Oh my God, I can't even count on how many awesome advice I've received, uh, which has helped me get to where I am. Um, I think one of the most important um, advice that I've received in my life is learn to unlearn. Learn to unlearn? Yeah, learn to unlearn. We have these preconceived notions of what it should be, right? And we stop thinking about it differently from there onwards. So we need to really learn to unlearn. I mean, just to put some context and give you an example, when we were building the store, actually, you know, it was so easy to just take all the learnings that we had from the retail environment that I have run myself also in the past and just apply exactly all of that into this environment, right? But and it was so hard to actually resist and say, no, I'm not going to do that. We're actually creating a different way to do in this retail experience. And so we had to unlearn so many things that we knew from the past to actually create this new environment of uh, today that, where we sit. I like the concept of unlearning. It resonates really strongly with us, yeah. especially when we work with our partners and uh, they start doing advertising on TikTok. We say, don't make ads, make TikToks. Unlearn the way that you usually do traditional advertising to understand the platform. So by learning, you have to let go of certain things. And as, as well, like when you move career chapters, uh, moved from FMCG to retail to uh, tech or, or digital advertising, you, you have to let go of certain skills and uh, w habits of doing things to be able to adapt into yeah. the new ways uh, of, uh, of, uh, of learning. Uh, so thank you for this. I, I really feel like this has been a crash course uh, in retail, like I mentioned uh, it's earlier. It's always awesome to speak to you. <laughs> Thank you. And it's awesome to be in this digital store. I know that the mall is opening very soon and I can already see like shoppers uh, wanting to come, to come uh, in, in uh, soon. Uh, but if it's okay with you, maybe we can talk uh, a little bit uh, more because I'm really enjoying this and I'd like Absolutely. this podcast to go we on. Can, we can sit so here all day long. I guess, I guess we... Wait, we <laughs> All right, we, so we still I guess a I, conversation I guess to be uh, we've been forced had. to wrap up. So uh, this was Darmin Ved, Chief Executive <laughs> Officer of SixStreet.com. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Uh, and as for me, I'll see you in another version of the future in the future. Thank 100%. you, Darmin. Thank you for having us here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thanks.